Ooh wee. All right, here we go. Welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I am Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a post-fight show for UFC 167. Uh, George St. Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks, one of the greatest fights of all time. Yeah, it was a close, hard-fought fight on both sides. I'm a fan of both. I'm glad. I'm kind of glad it panned out the way it did, because I don't want to see either guy really lose. And I think both kind of won because everyone feels like Johnny Hendricks won, but then George St. Pierre kind of officially won. And yeah, it, it was just great fight. I actually, yeah, let's this is the post fight show, so let's do a rundown of the main card. Yeah, the main event was George St. Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks for the UFC Welterweight Championship of the World. George St. Pierre, I felt like he won this fight. He barely landed a little bit more strikes on rounds 1, 3, and 5, which would mean that, assuming the ground game was neutral, which actually George St. Pierre had three takedowns to uh, Johnny Hendricks, two takedowns uh, throughout the match, the course of the match. I don't know which rounds those takedowns were all in exactly, but I remember seeing them because I remember gawking at the screen over this amazing fight. But yeah, George St. Pierre, he would technically win on decision than due to points because you when you land more strikes and everything else is kind of neutral and it goes to a judge's scorecard, they have to look at, that's the way it should be, they should look at the strikes landed because George St. Pierre looked way more banged up after the fight, but George St. Pierre bruises easier, he cuts easier. Johnny Hendricks has the body type where he could take 100 punches and it looked like none of them landed on him when they didn't, or they did, you know. And George St. Pierre, he just, they'll land, if they land on him, it looks like he's already out of it, but he's not. It's just, he just bruises easy. Um, so yeah, George St. Pierre did a good job and he got his umpteenth title defense. I believe this is 10 all ten straight title defenses. If you count the time when he won the interim welterweight title uh, from Matt Hughes and then he defended it, defended the interim welterweight title against Matt Serra and going after the welterweight title off Matt Serra at UFC 83 from that point on. Because technically he defended the interim title at UFC 83 and then from that point he was undisputed welterweight champion and so, nine, nine, uh, nine title defenses, ten, depending on how you look at it. So he's definitely one of the greatest pound for pound fighters in the world. I got him at number two still. Uh, Hannon Brow still number one with his thirty-one and one record, and George St. Pierre is now twenty-five and two. Yeah, George St. Pierre looks amazing. Um, yeah, he he. He did his thing. Johnny Hendricks, I, 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 like I said on my pre-fight show, I thought Johnny Hendricks was going to win this fight. But I gave George St. Pierre a 40% chance of winning. So it was a close one. It was a close, hard-fought fight. I'm so glad I watched this pay-per-view. Amazing. This, is, this, this fight was the reason why. It re reminded me why I'm a fight fan in the first place. Yeah, Johnny Hendricks, though, I think he should get another crack at the title, either whether it be interim title, because George St. Pierre, we don't know his situation completely. And so I think Johnny Hendricks should get a shot at the, uh, an interim title at least, or get another shot when St. Pierre comes back, assume, depending on what happens. So that wraps up that fight. Then in the co-main event, we had Sugar Shot Evans versus Chell Sonnen. This was great fight. It was a wrestling match. Rashad took Chell down and was pretty much able to keep him down. And Rashad Evans did his thing, ground and pound, and he won by uh, TKO punches uh, in top position. It was only a first rounder, so that pretty much sums up the whole match. Uh, good, shot, uh, good job, Rashad Evans. Really happy for you. Big fan of both Sonnen and Evans, so I was going to be happy either way. And, yeah, I just knew Rashad was going to win this because 
he had as good, probably as good as MMA wrestling as Chell Sonnen, but then also he has the heavier hands, and he's more well-rounded. He can go for submissions if he wants to, too. Um, he has a black belt in BJJ, so uh, people forget about that, about Rashad Evans. Then, also on the main card, we had Rory McDonald versus Robbie Lawler. Wow, shocking upset of the century right here. Robbie Lawler uh, won, wins by a split decision. Yeah, I mean, I had Robbie Lawler winning this fight. Yeah, easily. He, uh, Robbie Lawler was definitely um, looking good in the first round. Second round, maybe. And third round, Robbie Lawler definitely was winning that round, it looked like. And, yeah, Rory McDonald, he just got overwhelmed. I think the heavy hands uh, of Robbie Lawler was kind of uh, causing Rory McDonald to play safe and just try to keep a distance, but then it went on for too long and Robbie Lawler was able to close the distance and land the heavy shots. And he uh, also uh, knocked down Rory a couple times. So that was pretty exciting, explosive fight. I'm a big fan of both these guys also, so I'm happy either way. That's what I love about this pay-per-view, all but one of the fights on the main card. I'm a fan of all the fighters. Uh, so I'll get to that fight in a moment. But then also in the welterweight division, we have on the main card, Josh Koscheck versus Tyrone Woodley. Yeah, this one, come on. If you didn't think Tyrone Woodley was going to win this, wow. I mean, really, think about it. Ty this was an easy win for Tyrone Woodley. Uh, I'm a big fan of both. Yeah, Koscheck and Woodley, but I knew Woodley would win this. Uh, yeah, he won by a KO punch in round one. And that, that's pretty much what it was, is, you know, just a stand-up war with Tyrone Woodley's heavier hands doing the work. And Koscheck was really trying to uh, go in, look like maybe uses his wrestling. And, yeah, Woodley, though, he landed, he landed a, a good, heavy, I believe, right hand. Rock Koscheck, and then Koscheck kind of fell down a little bit, and then Woodley capitalized and steamrolled on him, and thus en route to a KO victory in the first round. Great explosive fight. Again, not much to say about that fight. It was all in the first round. Then, to kick off the main card, we have in the flyweight division Tim Elliott versus Ali Bogatinov. Yeah, this is that one fight, the only fight on the main card where I was like, I'm a Tim Elliott fan, but I'm not an Ali fan. I wanted Tim Elliott to win, but I kind of figured Ali's the next big thing in flyweight, so Tim. Tim's good, but he's not as good as Ali, and Ali would pretty much steamroll through him. And Ali did. I mean, it, well, it went to unanimous decision for Ali. But it was a good fight. I mean, it, it was it was a good it, it fight that had you on your, on your toes. And yeah, Ali just he landed more, and also he was able to deal with uh, some ground game. And yeah, great great fight. Ali is amazing at everything because he does this Russian combat training, and he's he has good sambo wrestling background and. His combat training back in Russia uh, gave him some good hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, so he knows how to mix it up pretty darn well, and he's serious. And you know, I think Tim Elliott just—he might have underestimated Ali, I think. And people in the know know that Ali is the real deal. He's gonna, yeah. Now he's 12 and two, and he just beat the number seven ranked flyweight. So that that was that was an interesting kind of fun to kick off the main card type of fight. Regardless, uh, yeah, great, 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 great main card, amazing pay per view, and yeah, that wraps up the main card for the post fight show for UFC 167. Uh, stay tuned for my pre fight show for U uh, Ultimate Fighter. 18 finale. I'll have to wait till the last episode airs, the last episode before the finale airs to 
even think about filming that, so that way the card's finalized and have something to talk about. Um, otherwise, we don't really know who's all listed on the card yet, so obviously that'll create issues if I'm trying to do a pre-fight show on it, so sometime past Wednesday, I will be delivering that Ultimate Fighter uh, pre-fight show, and it's going to be it's going to be a good uh, good main card for that. I I would imagine because you got the women. We're going to crown our very first women's tough winner. So until then, see ya.